This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. Forty years ago, the Supreme Court made a couple decisions that legalized abortion in all 50 states. Today, we know the full impact of that ruling on human lives. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard, along with Carrie Gordon Earl, who follows the life issue for us and also heads up our analyst team. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Stuart. Right, we want to talk about this Roe v. Wade decision and also a companion decision that a lot of people don't know about called Doe v. Bolton. And, and perhaps what's most surprising here, 40 years later, in 2013 is how many people still don't fully understand what those two decisions really did legally. Mm -hmm. Tell us what they do. Well, people hear Roe v. Wade and they know that has to do with abortion. They know there was a Supreme Court ruling, but as you said, 40 years ago next week, there were two decisions that came down together. And Roe v. Wade from Texas, Doe v. Bolton from Georgia, those two in tandem cre erased every pro-life law in the nation. In states where abortion was banned, it was legal, and the legacy of those two rulings is abortion for any reason during the full nine months of pregnancy and paid for by taxpayer dollars. So unless there's been a state or federal law passed contrary to that, that is the legacy of these two Supreme Court decisions. And I think most people, when they hear Roe v. Wade, they think, okay, you know, maybe that allowed abortion, but they don't realize the scope of it. We're talking about abortion for teenagers without their parents knowing, for wives without their husbands even being notified about it. So it is a deep and wide sweeping Supreme Court ruling that has cost the lives now of 50 million preborn babies. And each of those have a mother and a father who's impacted by this. So, so it's a tragedy really beyond measure. And perhaps one of the deepest ironies about this, the Roe in Roe v. Wade, Norma McCorvey, mm -hmm. is now pro-life. Well, so is the Sandra Kano in Doe v. Bolton. Right. And that's what's interesting, both of these women carried their pregnancies to term. And both of them have become pro-life through the years. They have talked about looking back on this experience, how in their views they were exploited and used by uh, pro-abortion attorneys who were looking for ways to overturn the laws. And remember, in 1973, when these rulings were handed down, abortion was illegal in most places. Uh, where it was legal, it was very tightly regulated. Um, so. It really overnight shifted the landscape. Uh, I think most people didn't know at that time it would create an industry that we have now, an abortion industry, uh, that would be so impactful in our nation. Let, let's talk about that impact. How are men and women impacted each day by abortion? Well, you know, Stuart, even if you have not been involved in an, in an abortion decision, it impacts you. It impacts you as a citizen of this nation that we live in a country where it's legal to intentionally destroy members of the human family. And when you think about the impact of that, perhaps on violence in the nation, um, if you devalue one life, have you not devalued all lives? Um, it impacts us as taxpayers that we underwrite the abortion industry through Planned Parenthood. Now, money is not supposed to directly go to abortion at the federal and state level. But we know that that gets all mixed up and jumbled. So we really are underwriting uh, the killing of preborn children and the injuring of their mothers. Um, it affects us as families. I think uh, we've got to remember every one of us knows someone who's had an abortion. You may not realize it, but you do. With 50 million abortions, um, everybody knows somebody who's had this experience. And the impact it can have on the family, tearing apart relationships, impacting husbands and wives, parents and teenage daughters, it's very impactful for us that way. And then the individuals who have been involved in an abortion decision. You know, often it's after the fact that we realize those negative consequences. Uh, so it's, it impacts us in culture as well. Again, the polls show us most Americans don't like abortion and they want less of it. But it is deeply ingrained in the culture. Uh, and so we have to continue to work to get out that pro-life message of hope. And Focus on the Family recently produced a video that tells your story. We mm -hmm. want to share a little clip of that. In 1981, I was a pastor's daughter attending a Christian college when a positive pregnancy test threatened to derail my plans for graduate school. Abortion was legal. It was advertised in the phone book. It had physicians involved. It had the government stamp of approval. And it really seemed like the logical decision to make. In fact, I can remember thinking, if I ever become pregnant, well, I can just have an abortion without really knowing what that meant. 
Gary, perhaps the, the one aspect of this whole debate that our side often doesn't get credited with enough, those of us who are pro-life, is that, that we are people who believe in grace. We understand God's forgiveness. Well, we really do. And I think too often in the church, because we're not talking about this issue, we have women sitting in the pews who've experienced abortion, who regret their decision, who are living under that shame and that secret. And when the pastor doesn't speak from the pulpit, she thinks, A, God doesn't care, or B, it's okay that I feel this condemnation. And that is not the truth. And, and part of me sharing my testimony is that I want women to know there is hope and healing in Jesus Christ after abortion. And the way that we find that is by telling someone. Tell the secret. You don't have to do a TV interview, but find someone you trust, a pastor, a friend, someone in the family, and just say, listen, i got to get this off my chest. By confessing that, you start to move into healing. And then look for counseling. Uh, Pro-life uh, pregnancy centers, uh, community-based, all across the country, um, have counseling programs that you can be with other women who've experienced this. There is shame in realizing that you had a hand in destroying your own child. But there is forgiveness and there is healing after that. So we want women to be walking in that truth and we want the church to be theologically sound on the value of life, that God created us in his image and he has a purpose for every life that is created, but to do that in a loving way so that women know they don't have to live with that regret. That's powerful. Uh, what resources do we have here that we can offer folks who may want to learn more or, or seek the, the kind of wisdom and insight that you're talking about? You know, probably the best uh, web resource for you is beavoice.net, beavoice.net. And that is connected to our pregnancy center ministry as well. Uh, what we're encouraging folks to do is try to have a Sunday at your church, to have a Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. Now we've earmarked January 20th, which is right around the corner. You may not have time to do it by that date. That's okay. You can do it in May for Mother's Day. But talk to your pastor, your church leader at beavoice.net. We have videos, we have sermon outlines, bulletin inserts, just about everything you'd need. Uh, but just to have a time at your church to talk about scripture, to talk about the love and forgiveness of God and the value of life. We think that could uh, be a very important place of healing for your own church community. Gary, thank you for sharing your story and thank you for sharing that kind of encouragement with, with the folks who are watching us. Thank we appreciate you, it. Yeah. All right. And, and thanks to all of you who watch us here each week. Uh, we do love hearing from you. You may write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. We do read every note that comes in. We don't get to respond to all of them, but we do read each one that we get. We encourage you to pray for our elected officials as they see the March on Washington, the March for Life that's coming up. Uh, pray that they look out their office windows and realize there is something going on here and that this is an issue that Americans care about. And remember, stand tall and be heard.